Expat stores, we're here, we're here now. There's a doctor. Seasick Academy, Flux, Presidium, Lower Wards, Lower Markets. Flux? I don't think we have anything to do at the Flux yet, but it doesn't mean we can't check it out. Cora's Den, we've got multiple things to do there. We gotta talk to the guy, the general, who is spreading rumors about the consort, and then kill Fist. <laughs> is this... wait. Am I in the right place? Presidium. No, I want to go to Flux. Yeah. Located up these stairs. Oh, you hear the bumping club music already? You should be careful who you say that around. What? Everyone knows Fist isn't with the local criminals. Maybe, but I wouldn't go shouting it from the mountaintops. Yeah, unless you want to end up on his hit list. Yes, I heard he actually buried some corpses under the stage at Cora's Den. I wouldn't put it past him. Yes, and it might explain the stench in that place. <laughs> that might just be the B.O. Fist has a reputation already. Bring her back in a second, but she doesn't want to come. Ugh, I know, I know. I'll see if I can talk some sense into her next time I see her. Be careful. You know how stubborn your sister can be. The more you push and prod, the more she'll run away. Yeah, you're probably right. Thanks, Dorn. Sister problems? Sorry, I'm kind of busy right now. So, uh, what can I do for you? What were you discussing with the Volus? Who, Doran? Oh, uh, I was just asking him about my sister. See, she worked for Doran before she left to... Ugh, sorry. I don't want to bore you with my problems. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Well, okay. My sister Jenna left here to go work at Cora's Den. Oh, Problem no. Is, she's working as an informant for CSEC. You know, eavesdropping on the people there. If they find out what she's doing, they'll kill her. Being an informant is a dangerous job. That's what I've been telling her. Mm, I don't know. Sometimes I think she stays there just to spite me. That's not a good quality to have as a CSEC officer. Do you know who her contact at CSEC is? Mm, no. It's all very secret. Last time I asked an officer, he told me to stay out of it. For Jenna's safety. Another reason to go to Cora's den. Maybe I could help her understand just how dangerous Cora's den is. Would you? That'd be great. Just don't tell her I sent you. Well, I should get back to work before I get in trouble. <laughs> Thanks. No worries. Welcome to Flux. Name's Doran. What can I do for you? Is this a casino? Among other things, yes. It feels more like a nightclub. Some quasar stations, uh, if you're interested. What is quasar? Are you the owner? Owner, cook, and bartender. I've even been known to dance a little when the mood strikes me. Oh! We've got some quasar stations, uh, if you're interested. What can you tell me about the sisters working for you? Well, Jenna left to work at Cora's Den. Now her sister Rita is all worried she might be in some kind of trouble. Not much chance Jenna will change her mind, though. She's a stubborn one. If she wanted to come back, I'd take her in a second. The customers loved her. Mm. I should be going. Enjoy your time here at Flux. Okay, th thank you. I will. <laughs> Places like this always want to hire Krogan bouncers. It's like we're a status symbol for them. Because you're big and tough looking? You almost never see any keepers in this club. I guess they don't care what happens here. That or music keeps them away. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> oh yeah, can I can I join? No. Really? Oh, that's a bummer. I'm waiting for someone else. Okay, sorry. Just chatting up. 
Those must be the quasar stations in question. Uh, I don't have any money right now. Should I really be gambling? 20 credits to play. Get closest to 20 without going over. Okay, is this like blackjack? 20. How, how much money do I even have? I just used 20. Holy crap. 5. Let's go conservative. How, how much can I keep going? How do I stop? Go oh, 8. 8. Uh, yeah, if I do any more... Ah, uh, uh, but 10. Ah, uh, go big or go home. I am... Oh my god. I am a genius. No. Gambling is a road to many scary things. Let's not. <laughs> How much money do I have? $70! What about the high stakes one? Two hundred credits to play. Okay, don't even look at it then. <laughs> it's just higher stakes, pretty much. Hey, there is a keeper here. You were wrong, Garrus. Suspicious gambling machine. Someone rigged this machine to funnel credits their way. I'll run a trace. Okay, did you find anything? When do we get to know the results of this? You updated my thing. Track the signal. The signal seems to be coming from the ward's access corridor. Ward's access corridor? Okay, when we're in the area, we'll check it out. Should we go talk to... or explore the Korra's den now? I'm sorry, I didn't even see you here. Hey, good to see another human in here. I guess they couldn't afford hiring a Krogan bouncer here, huh? No. Now, if I want to go to Korra's den from here, we're going to use the fast travel a lot more later on, but right now, I still kind of want to know how the place actually is logistically first. Upper wards. Oh no, I think we got to go back down the stairs first. Korra's den, if I remember right. Ah. Continue down the stairs through the lower markets to get to Korra's den. Right. I feel like it's been a very long time since I've seen a game where they laid out the instructions like that to get to places. Because usually most games these days, you would just have like an objective marker or something. This way does feel a little bit more immersive. Although it's a bit more annoying and some people are definitely still gonna get lost. <laughs> Korra's den is in the lower wards. You know, the Citadel is a very, like, VIP location, very pristine and just elite. But I find it kind of funny that Korra's Den exists, like these seedier locations, the cheaper markets and stuff. Because it's like they understand that you can't just have the really expensive shops and really high-class everything. You gotta have a little bit of everything to cater to everybody. Located on the other side of the bridge. Oh, it's like their transit system. Oh, this might be the, the fast travel transit system. It's like space tobogganing. Oh. Yeah, that's how you know we're here. Looks like it's shut down. Fist knows we're coming. <gasps> Look at the mini-map. Oh my god. Oh! Whoa, the bartender! What did I ever do to you? Oh my god. Ah, uh, what's this? Is this a shotgun or is that a shotgun? We'll try it out. Where are the people? Oh! Oh god. I thought we were gonna do a lot of talking or something. Or at least look around properly. I don't think that's actually gonna be happening though. Eh. Hey, my hotkeys got reset, huh? Yeah, I wanna redo them again if that's okay. And then Rex, what do you have, Rex? Barrier? Warp. You can just warp. And then Garrus is sabotage. Overheat nearby enemy weapons, burning them.
Oh god. Damn, how did he know we were coming? News travels fast. Oh, we gotta be careful too. I'm nearly dead. I might be a little bit too gung-ho right now. Clear. Okay. We can refill this at the med clinic. All patched up. I'm looking at the map. There's two exclamation marks here. Or maybe I'm meant to just keep going forward, really. Fire containment system. Oh, maybe it's a uh, explosive? Well, don't touch it now. Uh. Stop right there. Don't come any closer. Warehouse workers. All the real guards must be dead. Stay back or we'll shoot. This would be a good time to find somewhere else to work. Yeah, yeah, right. That's a good idea. Yeah, I never like fist anyway. <laughs> they just leave! It would have been quicker to just kill them. Shooting people isn't always the answer. Our team has a lot of not only diverse species, but a lot of diverse beliefs and ways to deal with situations too. Rex being a mercenary, I'm not surprised at all that he would want to just shoot everybody. Did we just get a gun where it was level 3? Shotgun? Probably better than the one I have right now. Yeah. Oh, we can add upgrades here, right? Uh, look at that later on. Look at that later on. Okay. Go, go, go! Hey, what was the key for throwing a grenade again? I don't know. I'll have to figure it out later on. Oh my freaking god, hold on. There is a moth- Oh, I'm sorry, there's a moth in my room right now. I gotta get rid of it! I am so sorry, oh my god. It was standing right on my monitor. Oh lord. Dude, I'm already dead again! Deploy. Let's see. I'm trying to get rid of that one guy there. Can we? Oh, the turrets are crazy. Holy crap, we gotta... Oh no, Garrus can't do anything. How about give us a barrier at least? Would that be cool? We gotta be very careful about not killing myself too much here. There we go. Oh, the overheating on the sniper rifle is so... There we go, there we go. Rex! Rex! Oh, jeez, man. Go, go, go! Why is Garrus' stuff blocked? Oh, is it because he's down? Oh, it must be! Dang. Oh, I really gotta get used to the combat. There's a lot of, like, busy stuff going on here. Yes. Wait! Don't kill me, I surrender! Where's the Quarian? She's not here. I don't know where she is. That's the truth. He's no use to you now. Let me kill him. Wait, wait. I don't know where the Quarian is, but I know where you can find her. The Quarian isn't here. Said she'd only deal with the Shadow Broker himself. Face to face? Impossible. Even I was hired through an agent. Nobody meets the Shadow Broker, ever. Even I don't know his true identity. But she didn't know that. I told her I'd set a meeting up. But when she shows up, it'll be Saren's men waiting for her. Give me the location, now. Here on the wards, the back alley by the markets. She's supposed to meet them right now. You can make it if you hurry. What are you doing? The Shadow Broker paid me to kill him. I don't leave jobs half done. Understandable. But he, he was a surrendered man. But you are, you're with me now. Are you with me now? We're kind of in the same place together, but are you like under my team? Are you part of my crew? I guess not yet. 
we don't shoot unarmed prisoners. How many people died because of him? He brought this on himself. Besides, we have more pressing concerns. That quarian's dead if we don't go now. Yeah, no kidding. Holy crap. Uh... The Quarian's gonna die soon! Let's hack this computer! We gotta do it! We've been walking around for far too long. I don't remember how to freaking fight anymore. Holy crap, it's... Whoa, 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 whoa! We have an actual timer here, I just realized. Jenna? Rita? Later, later! Right now I gotta... Where am I trying to go to? Save the Quarian. The alley. Let's go! Come on! Shepard! Shepard! Are you serious? All oh, this sniper rifle coming in handy here. I gotta use my abilities more though, because that's the entirety of why I picked my... The Vanguard, which is supposed to have some sort of biotic abilities and all that. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, oh god. Can you do it, Rex? Let's go. Oh, I gotta bomb that. Dude. Which alleyway are we talking about here? The alleyway that we came in here through, right? Here? Yes! Did you bring it? Where's the Shadow Broker? Where's Fist? They'll be here. Where's the evidence? Ugh. No way. The deal's off. Mm-hmm. Maybe let's always begin with a barrier. It's always a good bet. Holy God. Just set me up. I knew I couldn't trust him. Quarian. Oh! Okay. <laughs> Were you hurt in the fight? I know how to look after myself. Not that I don't appreciate the help. Who are you? My name's Shepard. I'm looking for evidence to prove Saren's a traitor. Then I have a chance to repay you for saving my life. But not here. We need to go somewhere safe. We could take her to the human embassy. Your ambassador will want to see this anyway. She's not a human, though. Will they help? You're not making my life easy, Shepard. Firefights in the wards, an all-out assault on Korra's den. Do you know how many... Who's this? A Quarian? What are you up to, Shepard? Making your day, Ambassador. She has information linking Saren to the Geth. Really? Maybe you better start at the beginning, Miss... My name is Tali. Tali Zora Naraya. We don't see many Quarians here. Why did you leave the flotilla? I was on my pilgrimage. My rite of passage into adulthood. We heard about that in the Codex. Most of the Quarians are with their flotilla. I've never heard of this before. It is a tradition among my people. When we reach maturity, we leave the ships of our parents and our people behind. Alone, we search the stars, only returning to the flotilla once we have discovered something of value. In this way, we prove ourselves worthy of adulthood. What kinds of things do you look for? It could be resources like food or fuel, or some type of useful technology, or even knowledge that will make life easier on the flotilla. Through our pilgrimage, we prove that we will contribute to the community, rather than being a burden on our limited resources. Well, what happens to people who are, frankly, just going to be a burden? Older people? Really young babies? Well, yeah, really young babies will eventually grow up, but like, I don't know, people with disabilities? 
Do you cast them out? That's a bit. Tell us what you found. During my travels, I began hearing reports of Geth. Since they drove my people into exile, the Geth have never ventured beyond the Vale. I was curious. I tracked a patrol of Geth to an uncharted world. I waited for one to become separated from its unit. Then I disabled it and removed its memory core. I thought the Geth fried their memory cores when they died. Some kind of defense mechanism. How did you manage to preserve the memory core? My people created the Geth. If you're quick, careful, and lucky, small caches of data can sometimes be saved. Most of the core was wiped clean, but I salvaged something from its audio banks. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the conduit. That's Saren's voice. This proves he was involved in the attack. And the fact that he said it was a great victory, even when it obviously wasn't. Not the most direct kind of proof, but it's better than nothing. He said Eden Prime brought him one step closer to finding the conduit. Any idea what that means? The conduit must have something to do with the beacon. Maybe it's some kind of Prothean technology. Like a weapon. Wait, there's more. Saren wasn't working alone. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the conduit. And one step closer to the return of the Reapers. I don't recognize that other voice, the one talking about Reapers. Are they some kind of new alien species? According to the Memory Core, the Reapers were a hyper-advanced machine race that existed 50,000 years ago. The Reapers hunted the Protheans to total extinction, and then they vanished. At least, that's what the Geth believe. Sounds a little far-fetched. Reaper? The first thing I think of is Grim Reaper. Advanced machine race. The Geth are kind of machine-like too, right? So it, I guess it kind of makes sense that they'd somehow be in the cahoots. The vision on Eden Prime. I understand it now. I saw the Protheans being wiped out by the Reapers. The Geth revere the Reapers as gods. Yeah. The pinnacle of non-organic life. And they believe Saren knows how to bring the Reapers back. The Council is just going to love this. What, so did Saren just go to the Geth being like, Hey guys, I know how to bring the Reapers back, and the, the Geth believe him like a bunch of babies? Uh... This is a lot to handle. They might just ignore everything we tell them. No matter what they think about the rest of this, those audio files prove Saren's a traitor. The captain's right. We need to present this to the Council right away. What about her? The Quarian? My name is Tali. You saw me in the alley, Commander. You know what I can do. Let me come with you. We have Garrus, who's kind of like a tactical officer, Rex, who is a ruthless mercenary, and Tally, the super hacker. I thought you were on your pilgrimage. The pilgrimage proves we are willing to give of ourselves for the greater good. What does it say about me if I turn my back on this? Saren is a danger to the entire galaxy. My pilgrimage can wait. Oh, no, 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 no. This is part of your pilgrimage, Tally. I'll take all the help I can get. Thanks. You won't regret this. Anderson and I will go ahead to get things ready with the Council. Take a few minutes to collect yourself, then meet us in the tower. For meeting the Council, maybe having... Okay, first of all, Tally, yes, very strong tech. We're gonna bring Tally, because she's got to be there, right? And then... I guess Garrus? Oh, this is gonna kill me, okay? The fact that we can only bring two people around. I want to bring my whole crew around, what's wrong with that? We'll just walk around the Citadel with the whole crew. SSV Normandy crew! In the house. Unts, yeah! <laughs> All right. Okay, we do have a little bit of proof here, but I, I'm doubtful this will actually accomplish anything. 
So much empty space. A thousand of my people could live here and hardly even see each other. So your flotilla must usually be pretty cramped then. Hey guys, are you still here? I know there's a keeper here. You alright? Strained greeting, human. This is really not a good time. You seem distressed. Is there Have we heard this already? I think so. Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? She he didn't tell me. This what did this Asari do to you? I cannot you? speak more about this problem. Right. Good luck with your problem. Thanks to you, human. Good day. I feel like we had a lot of stuff to do at Korra's then, like look for the sister and all that, but maybe we gotta go back later on because Fistus people were there and they were kind of blocking everybody. Like I definitely saw the marker saying that, hey, Rita's here or whatever, but I didn't manage to... Um... Oh, Fist's OSD. Maybe we can go back and get that. Yeah, okay. It's okay, we'll, we'll go back later and see. The tower yet again. Now, we want to go back to the super VIP area once again. Oh. Excuse me, Commander Shepard. Could you spare a moment of your time? He's dressed exactly like Udina. Commander Shepard, my name is Samesh Bhatia. Forgive the intrusion, but I have nowhere else to turn. It's no trouble. What can I do for you? My wife was a Marine. She was in the 212 on Eden Prime. I've requested that my wife's body be returned to me for cremation, but the military has refused my request. Why did they refuse your request? There's got to be some reason. I don't know. All I know is that they have declared it impossible for my wife to be returned to me. There's no reason for your wife's body to be held like this. Just wait here. The man in charge of my case is Mr. Bosker. When I last saw him, he was in the expensive bar over there. Thank you for your time. I just want to give my wife a proper funeral, and the respect she deserves. Of course. Of course, that's the least we can do. Hello, Commander. Has any progress been made with Mr. Bosker? Will he return my wife's body? Tell me again what you've been told about your wife. <laughs> why are... As I said, I've been nothing. told nothing. I don't understand why they won't release her body to me. Is it because they can't find it? Or maybe it's... Too, oh, that's kind of horrible to think about, but too mutilated? Probably not, though. It might be some corruption-related thing. Where can I find this Mr. Bosker? He was in the expensive bar over there. Which expensive bar? I'll be back when I have more to tell you. Thank you, Commander. Oh, you probably mean the one that's, like, beyond the C-Sec place? The one bar where that lady is like, I'm too busy to talk to you. Just looking. Yes. My goodness, you're Commander Shepard. Your activities made for quite a briefing in the Diplomatic Corps. Is there something I can do to assist you? Yes. A man named Samesh Bhatia is having some trouble claiming his wife's body. Ah, Mr. Bhatia. A good man in an understandably frustrating position. I wish I could help him. Serviceman Nirali Bhatia died on Eden Prime as Mr. Bhatia no doubt told you. Her wounds are inconsistent with any type of weapon damage we've seen before. That is why her body is being held. How did you come to the conclusion that she's toxic? You think that her body might be dangerous or contaminated? No, Commander. Nirali Bhatia is not dangerous. Oh, I see, I see. Her body is in fact extremely valuable to the Alliance. The tests we're conducting may lead to better defenses against Geth attacks. Respectfully, Serviceman Bhatia may save more lives in death than she did in life. Okay, you need to tell the husband this. You can't just hide it and keep the body. How long do you think this research is going to take? This is a long-term study. I wouldn't expect the bodies to be released for a year or longer. You gotta have a lot of bodies. Can't you release one? Very few bodies had this new type of weapon damage, and very few were in good enough condition to study. Beyond that, Commander, we need as many bodies as we can to get a reasonable sample size. Well, that's not quite right either, because everybody is somebody's family member. Somebody else is gonna come asking. When will this research result in actual new technology? If we're lucky, 
We'll actually realize usable technology from this study in a few years. We could just say... Hmm, but both of these are probably quest ending, right? I kind of want the Alliance to keep the body, but I want the husband to know too. But can we come to a middle ground somewhere here? Let him know what's going on and maybe he'll feel differently. But I feel like this option is probably going to release the body right away. Should I try it? I understand what you're trying to do, but holding the body is wrong. Commander, you of all people should understand how far we must go to protect humanity. Not if we lose our humanity in the process. I am out here fighting to stop crap like this. All right, Commander. You win. It was hard enough refusing Mr. Bhatia. I'm not going to risk an incident by refusing you. Tell Samesh that the body is being shipped back to Earth. I'll go now to see to it myself. Sometimes solutions are presented as this or that, but we can definitely always try to think of something a little bit more in the middle. And I feel like letting the husband know, hey, this is what's going on. And then maybe he'll feel differently, or maybe... Oh, would he be okay with waiting a year for it? I kind of doubt it. But letting him know. I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. Letting him know. Maybe that would have been a better solution here. Although I, I didn't get the impression looking at the wheel that we could have just let him know, but not give him the body. Oh, I mean, give him the body later. Not withhold the body from him entirely. He's waiting for me. Hello again, Commander. Has there been any word? I reminded Mr. Bosker what we're fighting for. Your wife is coming home. Thank you. I will return home and begin my preparations. It does not bring me happiness, but it may bring me peace. Goodbye, Commander. So we got a Paragon outcome for this, and I feel like probably most people know about the shortcomings of the um, morality system in Mass Effect already, but was that truly a Paragon outcome? Yeah, we helped the man, but Bosker was completely right that this this might be dooming humanity. Because now we have one less thing to get research data from. It's like how Rex earlier killed Fist. If we keep him alive, like there's no point because he's killed so many people already and we're doing the world a favor by killing him. Ultimately, we're doing a good thing for the short term, but in the long run, what is actually going to be the best option? Well, nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. I went fairly often when it was still the Arcos. Yeah, ever since Fist took over, I don't go anymore. It seems like all the best lounges are being replaced by places like Cora's Den. The Embassy Lounge isn't bad, but they don't have any decent entertainment. It's run by bureaucrats. They probably spend months just voting on what kind of entertainment to get. <laughs> You're probably right. This entire Citadel is run by bureaucrats. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't find the general in Korra's den. It didn't say I failed it though, so I feel like I probably just gotta go back later on. I'm just gonna... maybe not go here for now. Oh, I wanted to check. Are there locations in the Codex? We can read about locations, too. Citadel and Galactic... no. Oh, planets and locations. Pharos is a habitable world in the Attican Beta Cluster. Two-thirds no. of the habitable surface is covered with the ruins of a crumbling Prothean megatropolis. In the millennia since the Prothean extinction, the ruins have been repeatedly picked over by looters many times. Pharos was considered a poor prospect for colonization, as little open ground remains for agriculture. The only sizable freshwater sources are the poles, which are tapped by the decaying Prothean aqueduct systems. The dead cities, while in good condition considering their antiquity, are of uncertain stability. Ground level is congested by a dozen meters of fallen debris, and the air is fouled by dust. In 2178, the Human Exogeny Corporation announced its intention to place a permanent colony on Pharos to thoroughly explore the ruins. 
The pioneer settlement was placed on the upper levels of several intact skyscrapers, using the surviving Prothean aqueducts and rooftop hydroponic gardens to support the population. Pharaoh's was a planet that we learned about from the shopkeeper in the CD marketplace, but I'm wondering if we can learn more about locations within the Citadel. The Citadel is an ancient deep space station, presumably constructed by the Protheans. Since the Prothean extinction, numerous species have come to call the Citadel home. It serves as the political, cultural, and financial capital of the galactic community. To represent their interests, most species maintain embassies on the Presidium, the Citadel's inner ring. The Citadel Tower in the center of the Presidium holds the Citadel Council Chambers. Council affairs often have far-reaching effects on the rest of the galactic community. Five arms, known as the wards, extend from the Presidium. Their inner surfaces have been built into cities, populated by millions of inhabitants from across the galaxy. The Citadel is virtually indestructible. If attacked, the station can close its arms to form a solid, impregnable shell. For as long as the station has existed, an enigmatic race called the Keepers has maintained it. That's what we saw out the window, the arms that can be closed. Wow. If not for the Keepers, maybe we can't even make use of this place because we don't know how it works. The Council is an executive committee composed of representatives from the Asari Republics, the Turian Hierarchy, and the Salarian Union. Though they have no official power over the independent governments of other species, what? the Council's decisions carry great weight throughout the galaxy. No single Council race is strong enough to defy the other two, and all have a vested interest in compromise and cooperation. Each of the Council species has general characteristics associated with the various aspects of governing the galaxy. The Asari are typically seen as diplomats and mediators. The Salarians gather intelligence and information. The Turians provide the bulk of the military and peacekeeping forces. Any species granted an embassy on the Citadel is considered an associate member, bound by the accords of the Citadel conventions. Associate members may bring issues to the attention of the Council, though they have no input on the decision. The Human Systems Alliance became an associate member of the Citadel in 2165. What year is it right now? Judging by how we brought Tally to the Human Embassy, I'm guessing the Quarians don't have one here, which probably is an indicator of how much power they have in the entire scheme of the how this political system works. I see you. Oh, I might have gotten you already. I have. How many... How many have I gotten so far? Uh, unusual readings. No, this is like other stuff. Oh, scan the keepers. 16! Oh, wow, 16 already! We've probably seen who we need to scan already. I just don't know how to find it again, and which ones I'm looking for specifically. Which is probably an indication that we should maybe use the fast travel a little bit less right now. Just walk around, leisurely. Do you want to go to the council right now? I mean, we could. Yudina did say it was an urgent thing. Oh my god, Garrus! They built a lake on a space station. I can't even imagine the resources needed to maintain it. Tally, the Quarians are like space nomads. Huh. The Protheans obviously understood the aesthetic value of the mass relays. Something we Quarians have learned to appreciate during our wanderings. Their nomadic lifestyle probably means resources are very valuable. You know, material resources, space. Uh, does Garrus want to join us? I know he's like stuck over there on a ledge or something. <laughs> oh! Please do not disturb the keepers. Please do not oh, disturb okay. the keepers. Oh, okay. It's just examining the keeper. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure I scanned this one already. Oh, hey! You're back to preaching! Let all races herald the glory of the Enkindlers who raised them all to enlightenment. 
Where there was only darkness, the enkindlers gave light. Where there was only ignorance, the enkindlers gave wisdom. Where there was only silence, the enkindlers gave the gift of speech. This very station is the work of the enkindlers, their gift to all their children. I am so sorry, but which side is the front of your face? Like here? I think so. I've got a lot of legs. I feel like we should all feel sort of indebted to the Protheans. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be standing on the Citadel right now. In the mass relays. But if the Hanar are the ones... I went past the tower. If the Hanar are the ones who treat them like gods, I'm sure some people out there are like, Screw the Protheans, I don't care! Welcome back, Garrus. There's no way the Council can ignore us this time. Saren's days as a Spectre are done. Oh, both of them have like two toes. I like how sometimes you can tell what species is underneath a spacesuit just by the shape of the the suit. Because earlier, I think some of the people that Tally were fighting were Solarians, and they were pretty thin and slender. All right, Council. What do you have to say now? I doubt it's anything useful. But now that we have concrete evidence, you got to do something. Maybe, but I wouldn't believe everything you hear. But that's just it. I'm hearing it everywhere. It's not just isolated rumors. Do you really think Saren could be involved in something like that without the council knowing it? Oh. Maybe the council does know. Everyone already assumes he's just doing their dirty work. That's dangerous talk. I'd be careful who you mention that to. I know. But if it's true, shouldn't we be doing something about it? No. And I'll thank you to keep me out of it if you do. He's gotta watch his position. His guy's a Turian after all. I'm not telling you to remove Saren's status as a Spectre immediately. But I think it would be nice if you could acknowledge what we're saying here by maybe suspending his resources at the minimum. And actually launching an investigation. Come on. Udin is presenting the Quarian's evidence to the Council. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the conduit. And one step closer to the return of the Reapers. You wanted proof? There it is. This evidence is irrefutable, Ambassador. Saren will be stripped of his Spectre status, and all efforts will be made to bring him in to answer for his crimes. Oh! I recognize the other voice, the one speaking with Saren. Matriarch Benezia. Well, was it really that irrefutable? I'm surprised you guys are actually taking action! Yeah, I just realized that too. That was a matriarch speaking. Who is she? Matriarchs are powerful Asari who have entered the final stage of their lives. Revered for their wisdom and experience, they serve as guides and mentors to my people. Matriarch Benezia is a powerful biotic and she had many followers. She will make a formidable ally for Saren. I'm more interested in the Reapers. What do you know about them? Only what was extracted from the Geth's memory core. The Reapers were an ancient race of machines that wiped out the Protheans. Then they vanished. I feel like some intergalactic library somewhere should probably have more information. We can't be the first to learn about this. The Geth believe the Reapers are gods, and Saren is the prophet for their return. We think the Conduit is the key to bringing them back. Saren's searching for it. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Do we even know what this conduit is? Saren thinks it can bring back the Reapers. That's bad enough. Listen to what you're saying. Saren wants to bring back the machines that wiped out all life in the galaxy? Impossible. It has to be. Where did the Reapers go? Why did they vanish? How come we found no trace of their existence? If they were real, we'd have found something. Okay, you're actually saying that we've never heard of Reapers before. Mm, I thought they were just explaining the Reaper stuff for the benefit of the player, but you're saying... No, this is entirely new to everybody 
in the meeting right now. Okay. I don't know, actually. I don't know. I don't have any information. But they're talking about it. I tried to warn you about Saren and you refused to face the truth. Don't make the same mistake again. This is different. You proved Saren betrayed the Council. We all agree he's using the Geth to search for the Conduit, but we don't really know why. The Reapers are obviously just a myth, Commander. A convenient lie to cover Saren's true purpose. A legend he is using to bend the Geth to his will. Why is Saren not in this meeting? He's not even being allowed to defend himself. <laughs> I feel like the- I mean, as the person bringing up the evidence, I feel like the evidence is kind of flimsy. Ah, uh, Shepard, you saw the Reapers in your dreams, in your visions. 50,000 years ago, the Reapers wiped out all galactic civilization. If Saren finds the conduit, it will happen again. Saren is a rogue agent on the run for his life. He no longer has the rights or resources of a Spectre. The Council has stripped him of his position. Already? That is not good enough. You know he's hiding somewhere in the Traverse. Send your fleet in! A fleet cannot track down one man. A Citadel fleet could secure the entire region, keep the Geth from attacking any more of our colonies. Or it could trigger a war with the Terminus systems. We won't be dragged into a galactic confrontation over a few dozen human colonies. Excuse me? I wouldn't be surprised if the Council were so quick to strip his Spectre status because they realize, oh no, the cat's out of the bag, so we just gotta... You know, put him away for now. I hope it's not the case, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was. They didn't even let him defend himself and he's already gone. What? Oh. I can take Saren down. The commander's right. There is a way to stop Saren that doesn't require fleets or armies. No, it's too soon. Humanity is not ready for the responsibilities that come with joining the Spectres. You don't have to send a fleet into the Traverse, and the Ambassador gets his human Spectre. Everybody's happy. Commander Shepard, step forward. It is the decision of the Council that you be granted all the powers and privileges of the Special Tactics and Reconnaissance Branch of the Citadel. Spectres are not trained, but chosen. Individuals forged in the fire of service and battle. Those whose actions elevate them above the rank and file. Spectres are an ideal, a symbol, the embodiment of courage, determination, and self-reliance. They are the right hand of the Council, instruments of our will. Spectres bear a great burden. They are protectors of galactic peace, both our first and last line of defense. The safety of the galaxy is theirs to uphold. You are the first human Spectre, Commander. This is a great accomplishment for you and your entire species. Somebody's probably gonna be not happy about this, but I am. I'm honored, Counselor. We're sending you into the Traverse after Saren. He's a fugitive from justice, so you are authorized to use any means necessary to apprehend or eliminate him. Any idea where to find him? We will forward any relevant files to Ambassador Udina. This meeting of the Council is adjourned. Love how useless Udina was. Congratulations, Commander. We've got a lot of work to do, Shepard. You're going to need a ship, a crew, supplies. You'll get access to special equipment and training now. You should go down to the CSEC Academy and speak to the Spectre Requisitions Officer. Anderson, come with me. I'll need your help to set all this up. I thought the Ambassador would be a little more grateful. He didn't even thank you. He was entirely useless in that conversation. I grabbed the Spectre status for myself. He didn't even bring it up. That was his job, okay? He should have been the one making the suggestion to do that. <sighs> Whatever. Until I find Saren, I haven't done anything. Come on. Right behind you, Shepard. 
Spectre bonus, Spectre training talent unlocked. What does that mean? Is that something I can find in my, in my skills or something? What the? Oh, where did I get the, all this? Oh. Hey, I feel like I'm actually getting some money again. Yay. Well, it feels like they made a really rash decision here. That was kind of hilarious. <laughs> Through all my time at CSEC, I, I never got the chance to witness a meeting of the Council in person. We've tried to create organic environments back on the flotilla, but we lack the space for anything as grand as this. Everyone following us is getting a huge chance to see all sorts of new things too. And me too! It's my first time on the Citadel. And at this rate, I feel like we're never leaving the Citadel. There's just too much going on here! <gasps> Let's see... Codex. The Citadel. Spectres are agents from the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance, and answer only to the Citadel Council. They are elite military operatives, granted the authority to deal with threats to peace and stability in whatever way they deem necessary. They operate independently or in groups of two or three. Some are empathetic peacekeepers, resolving disputes through diplomacy. Others are cold-blooded assassins, ruthlessly dispatching problem individuals. All get the job done one way or another, often operating outside the bounds of galactic law. The Spectres were founded after the Salarians joined the Council. For many years, they operated in secrecy as backroom problem solvers. Only after the Krogan rebellions did their activities become publicized. Assignment of a Spectre is less contentious than a military deployment but makes it clear that the Council is concerned about a situation. It's crazy that they don't go checked at all. There's no monitoring system. There's no accountability. But the good thing is, now we have this power too. 